Welcome to our lecture online. So here we're going to show you another video to help you understand the concept of reduced mass. On the previous video, we saw that it was necessary to compensate for the fact that small objects, small stars, revolving around larger stars do so not around the center mass of the large star, but around the very center. And for that, we need to calculate the reduced mass. And we realize that the equation for reduced mass is right here, where we have the product over the sum of the mass of the large and the small star. But does that remind us of some other equation in physics? Matter of fact, there's quite a few equations in physics like that, but one of them is how we calculate the total resistance of two resistors in parallel. So let's say we have two resistors in parallel. Notice we have a 20 ohm resistor and a 5 ohm resistor. This is the equation to calculate the total resistance, but since there's only two of them here, we can convert that to a product over the sum equation. So if we calculate the product over the sum, we get 100 divided by 25, which is 4 ohms, and notice that the result of that is always going to be less than the smaller of the two resistors. In this case, 4 is always going to be less than 5. So notice that since we use the same equation here, the reduced mass will always be less than the smallest of the two masses. In other words, the reduced mass is the mass that we're going to assign to the small object in order to make it correct as far as the equations of motion are concerned and where F equals ma. So again, we use the example where the large mass is 20 times 10 to the 24 kilogram, the small mass is 5 times 10 to the 24 kilogram. Those masses are actually a little bit small for stars, but it doesn't matter. It uh, doesn't matter what the units are, or what, the, what the values are, but if we calculate it, notice we get the same result. We get the result of 4 times 10 to the 24 kilograms, which of course is less than the small mass, because the reduced mass is always going to be smaller than the smallest of the two masses. That's why we call it the reduced mass, and the reduced mass is always assigned to the smaller of the two objects to make the equation of motions, and every equals may come out correctly under the circumstance that the small mass revolves around the very center and not around the center mass of the large mass. That's of course always the case when the small mass is not that much smaller than the large mass. If the large mass is huge and the small mass is very small, we no longer need to do that. The reduced mass will be very, very close to the actual mass of the smaller object. But you can see the, the, it, sometimes it helps to compare it to something that we're familiar with and always remember that the reduced mass is smaller than the small mass of the two masses and that that reduced mass is always assigned to the smaller of the two masses. And that's how we have a better concept of what we mean by the reduced mass.